and welcome back to the video and today I am doing another episode of the 300 prompts series this is number six in the series if you guys don't know what this is basically I have this book called 300 prompts they also make a 500 prompts one but it gives you a bunch of different drawing prompts and you get to take the prompt and make anything that you want using that prompt. The prompt for today is a comic book cover. The thing that was really nice about this prompt is the page is like a full page. A lot of the pages are like cut in half, either diagonally or horizontally or vertically, but I got to use the entire page for this, so I had a lot of room to explore. So the first thing I did was actually look into old comic books like from Marvel and DC and kind of see how they looked. I wanted to do kind of, I wanted to take inspiration from vintage comic books. A lot of the things that I noticed in old comic book covers or just comic book covers in general, it was usually some kind of fight scene between two different people, usually a hero and a villain. And then a lot of the old ones use really bright colors. So what I wanted to do was make sure that I had a hero character and a villain character fighting each other. I also wanted to avoid seeing the back of someone's head and then like the full on of someone else's head because sometimes they did that a lot and I wanted to be able to see both of their faces. So I decided to go with this fighting scene where one guy's holding on to the other guy's shirt and they're both like about to punch each other. One thing that I wanted to discuss was the subject of symmetry. So I know this is this drawing kind of looks like it's symmetrical but really it's not. So I decided to have one character higher than the other and one lower because this adds more depth to the image. Having something that's completely symmetrical um, allows for the eye to like already predict what's on the other side and thus it's like not as appealing usually. Don't get me wrong, there's always a place for symmetrical artwork, but one thing that I've learned over time was having things that aren't symmetrical gives more to look at, it's more interesting and not as predictable. One thing that I decided to do with this sketch was not do shading. So if you have seen my past artworks, um, I did a lot of really in-depth shading on the actual page, but I decided not to do this because we're gonna actually be bringing this over to digital artwork and showing you guys how I do that because um, I was asking in a lot of my other 300 prompts videos if you guys want to see my digital process since I usually convert it for the thumbnail and you guys said yes So we're gonna actually head over to the digital artwork right now and I'll show you guys how I did that Alright, so this is actually what my process is for heroic set 2 also um, I do basically all of the same stuff I usually instead of sketching on a paper first I sketch in the actual software first and then just turn the opacity down on the sketch and go over with my line work And then another difference is I usually do the horizontal like shading and sketch lines which you can see in a lot of my artwork but I didn't do that for this today I was just kind of messing around with a few different things seeing what I liked one of the things that I learned over starting to transition to digital work especially for heroic was the power of erasing so when I first started digital work I would instead of making like one long straight line I would like go and then stop like if something kind of interrupted that line and then keep going. And what this did was make it seem like not one uniform line and they were never always completely parallel. But something that I learned a lot was the power of like making a really long brush stroke and then just like erasing the ends that like go off to where they're not supposed to be. This allowed me to get these like super clean lines and like really good angles instead of having rounded angles. And honestly, it just turns out way better than, um, than trying to make it perfect every time. Something that I really took into attention for this drawing was the power of color. I could use the color to character characterize my characters because you can obviously tell that one is more of an evil character and one's like a better character or like the hero, I guess. So a lot of the comic book covers that I looked at always have like the villain and the hero. So that's what I was going for and was making sure that my audience could tell who was who. So let's take a look at the villain. For the villain, I use a lot of dark colors, less colorful colors basically. So I've got um, blacks, whites, grays, a little bit of red in there. And his skin tone is not quite as vibrant. And basically using these like really dull colors and then having like this really pop of red makes it it's a very like villainous colors like people usually correlate these colors to being a villain red in general is one of those colors that's very good for characterizing something that's evil because it's correlated with so many things like that so i think making his eye especially red was like almost like an instant like this is the villain another thing that i could use to my advantage to characterize was facial expressions so 
Um, the villain's eyebrow is a lot more art than the hero, and it's a lot more curvy, and his um, mouth is a lot more like menacing, and he has like a, like a spiked tooth in there too. This all just kind of like correlates to him being evil, gives almost like a vampire-y feel too. Also his hair is a lot more messy. It just adds to a lot of his character depth and lore in his story. Now, if we take a look at the hero, he comes off a lot calmer. His eyebrow isn't nearly as, as curved. It's a lot calmer. His hair is more smoothed out. A lot of like his clothing and the things he's wearing is just more put together. And then of course, for the colors, I used like pretty vibrant colors. I didn't go for a lot of the dark colors because that kind of correlates to the villainous side. So I went with these really bright pinks, a little bit of blues, golden, colors. It all kind of gives that big like hero vibes like this is the good guy. The good guy in general is a lot calmer looking and he looks more put together. He looks like he's not afraid of the villain. Another thing that I want to discuss was the power of highlights in this drawing and I've talked a little bit about this before but especially in this drawing I thought it was super prominent was the power of using highlights. So as you can see both characters eventually have a like a fiery power in both their hands and I used um, colorful highlights to kind of accentuate the light that would come from those and it also draws the eye to those powers. So on the edge of both their faces I have like a pink highlight because um, the villain has like a pinkish red flame in his hand so again that would emit a, like a pink light and then on the good guy he has like this blue power and on the back of him like the back of his head he has this blue highlight and I feel like highlights especially colorful highlights like this just adds so much to the drawing in general and make it a lot more eye appealing and there's more to look at so um, if you ever have something that's emitting light especially especially a colorful light I would recommend trying this out one thing that I wanted to quickly discuss was the the idea of throwing this into heroic I know this is very like it's very stylistic to heroic and kind of looks like it's part of it so I'm either going to implement it into like a card probably more of like a gadget because there's several dudes in here or it'd be like the front of like a booster pack or something but I actually really enjoy how this art turned out in the end so I definitely want to use it for something I don't know just let me know what you think in the comments if you think it should go into heroic or you don't think so all right guys well thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you liked seeing my digital process since i don't usually in put that into 300 prompts very often um if you guys enjoyed this video go ahead and leave a like leave a comment down below let me know what you guys want to see next on my channel and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome art videos and i'll see you guys next time bye